Well, I'm very happy to start this program about the, the brain. It's not my specialty, the brain, right? I'm a mathematician. Um, and I'm more going to talk about the abilities of our brain. I'm not going to talk about the rumor thing tonight. I can talk afterwards if you like. So I'm going to start with a question. So I heard uh, most of you are scientists, so I suggest you are all very good at math, right? Who is good at math? Yes, okay. Well, actually, as a mathematician, I often hear people saying I'm very bad at math, I'm not good at math, but we might not realize it, but we do actually very complicated tasks, right? We, we do very hard computations, like, uh, well, okay. we, we are not all, you know, professional pool players, but when you think about it, like, they have to compute all the, the rebounds, the, the angles uh, without touch and stuff. And we are not all also uh, parking huge trucks like this. But even when you park a small car, you have to have a lot of uh, parameters in your mind, you know, all the distances, you know, how to turn the wheel. And when you think about it, if you make some sport or whatever, you always make a task where you're going to have to make a lot of computations. But you do it intuitively, right? And this is what you call math, actually, right? Computations. And uh, when I go to the restaurants with friends, uh, <laughs> quite often they make this joke, like, oh, you're the mathematician, so you know how to split up the bill equally, right? And no, because actually I don't do computations with numbers. Uh, I don't do so many computations, but when I do them, it's more with letters or with uh, abstract stuff, right? But uh, mathematics is more about reasoning, right? Logic and trying to see how arguments come together uh, logically and stuff. And today I'm more going to talk about this and actually more about when it fails, right? And in some sense, uh, I'm going to give you examples or optical illusions, but with the brain. When you, you, I, I will give you like situations and you will maybe come to a conclusion and sometimes you'll see it's easy to get trapped. So let's start by a first example. It's, uh, it really happened actually, but I, I didn't find the actual data, so it's more fictitious example here. So imagine some politician who arrives in power in uh, 2012, for instance, and when he arrives, it's about you know, the proportion of students at the university which are women. So one third of university students are women. And five years later, he's finished his job and he's very happy and he claims that half of young women go to university. So he did a good job, right? So I mean, we all want to have such a guy in the Minister of Higher Education. Looks very good, okay? Well, actually, it's not so simple. I cannot say he did a good job or a bad job, but in this case, he's just playing with numbers. He's just setting a trap for your mind in some sense. Because when you look about it, it's actually possible that both statements are true at the same time. It's because in some case, you are computing the, the ratio between the number of women students over the total number of students, which can be one third. And in the second case, it's just the number of women students by the number of young women. And these two ratios can be different, okay? You can look on this picture. So here on the left uh, rectangle, you have all the students. It's just uh, fictitious numbers. And in the bottom, you have all the young women. You see that you can have at the same time one sort of students which are women and half of the women which are students, right? So he's just coming up with numbers to make him look good. Here, this, you know, like in a political debate or anything, you just say, oh, he did a good job, but then you realize it's very easy to get trapped. Okay, so it was a first example, right? Pretty simple example. So now let's come to more serious stuff. Okay, bad situations. Uh, you take a test for cancer, okay, breast cancer. One of the tests is with uh, radiography. And bad news, imagine you have a positive, positive test for breast cancer. But there is a happy ending. So imagine you have a positive test, right? Uh, what's the probability that you actually get cancer? Okay, here you are missing data, right? You are missing numbers. So let's give some data. Okay, the test is 90% accurate. That looks actually worse. So. What's the probability that you get cancer? Well, you're going to maybe say 90%, right? Actually, it's not that exactly. So to see how numbers, how it plays out with numbers, we can look at this picture. So in this picture, uh, every small square represents, uh, let's say, a woman or a group of women. Uh, the, the gray squares represent women which have a positive test for cancer, test saying they have cancer. And the crosses is uh, people who actually get cancer. So the first thing I want to say is that uh, the data is true because 
when you look at the, all the people who don't have cancer, there are only 10% of them who get a positive test. For 90% of these people, uh, the test is actually negative, meaning the square is right. And for the people who actually got cancer, so you have all these crosses, about 90% of them have a positive test. So the data is true, okay? I didn't lie with the data, right? It's 90%, like I said. But now let's go into the situation where you actually have a positive test. So what does it mean? It means you are one of the gray squares. And if you're one of the gray squares, you have actually a lot of chances not to get a black cross, right? So only like about 10% of the gray squares have cancer. So the answer to the question is that what is the probability that you get cancer is only 10%. So once again, well, I don't want to talk about cancer so much, but once again, the bottom line here is that you have some numbers, you have some situation where you going to jump to conclusions that, uh, oh my God, I'm doomed, I have cancer, I'm going to you know, have cancer, but actually it's not so bad. Okay, so the numbers really fool your mind, and there's a lot of situations like this where you have numbers which appear like in some sense, and actually uh, they are differently. Okay? Last example. Okay, so there are formulas about this. I'm not going to go through them, but if you want to, go to do things straight, you can, uh, there are nice mathematical theory behind it, and you have to study this a bit, but uh, you can actually come to the right answer in a straightforward way. Last example, recent stuff, right? COVID vaccine. And here I'm going to play with data a little bit more. So here you have uh, this example where I'm going to explain a little bit. Uh, on the left, you have uh, young people in blue, people less than 50 years old, and all the people on the right in red, which are over 50 years old. The light colors, light blue, light red, is the people who didn't get a vaccine. So it's just at the beginning of the vaccine campaign. So mostly older people have vaccine and younger people don't have vaccine. And the black cross is, is people who get, uh, get diseased from COVID uh, after being exposed to it. But once again, it's not the real numbers. I'm going to give the real numbers afterwards. But what is, is interesting here is that when I look at the young people, uh, what I see is that uh, vaccine is good for you. Because when you look at the vaccine guys, nobody gets disease from the COVID, okay? And when you look at the unvaccinated guys, well, one of them, one of the squares got the cross. So looks like the vaccine is good for you. Now, look at the right side of this. It's the same thing. If you look at the vaccinated guys, there is a small proportion of them who got disease from COVID. But in the non-vaccinated area, you have a lot of, in proportion, you have a high proportion of people who died from COVID, okay, like 40%. So when you look at this, you say, okay, so in this proportion of the plane, uh, vaccine is good. In this portion of the plane, vaccine is good. So let's try to make some logic here. So this is the actual numbers uh, at this time of the study. Uh, so for young people, when you're non-vaccinated, uh, you have twice as many times to die from COVID than when you are vaccinated. And for the older people, it's six times more. So, okay. Let's say you can have a mathematical theorem here, a logical conclusion here, which is that in the overall population, it means that vaccine is good for you. It seems like, you, I mean, it's difficult to say otherwise, right? When you look at this data, you, can, you cannot you know, logically say is it true. Well, actually, it doesn't work. So here, you might not have realized it, but if you look at the overall population, you have more times, more chances of dying when you get vaccine. It's weird, right? It's not what you expected, maybe. So, okay, let's try to accept this. Let's try to accept that uh, the actual data says that you have more chances of, of dying. Then it means the vaccine does not work, right? But this is not true also, actually. So let's try to see how it works. Let's go back to the picture. Okay, so let's look at all the vaccinated people. So all the vaccinated people is all the dark, uh, dark squares here. You have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six crosses, right? And in the light area, you have only three crosses. So you have more crosses among the vaccinated people than among the non-vaccinated people, okay? So it means the vaccine is bad for you, right? Totally the opposite of what we were saying before. Okay, so there was a lot of controversy with the vaccine, right? So it's very easy to, 
come up with this data, and which is everything is accurate here. It's really a study in the British population at the beginning of the campaign. So you come up with the numbers and you say, well, vaccinated people, they die more from COVID. So that's fact. Nothing is a lie here. Okay, it's true. And so the first surprising thing is that in each part of the population, vaccine is good, but in the overall part, it's not good. This is the same picture. I'm not playing with you, right? It's the same. You know, I didn't put crosses in the meanwhile. It's really the same. So first surprising stuff. But then we can still think about it, okay? So vaccine is bad for you, seems a bit weird, so let's try to think a bit more about this. Uh, what happens is that if I draw someone randomly from the vaccinated population, what I'm likely to get is an older person. Because at this time of the campaign, the older person were much more vaccinated. And if I take randomly an older person, she's more likely to die from COVID. This is all the explanation to it, actually. So the bottom line here is that uh, the on, the, there is a correlation between vaccine and death. And in these two numbers uh, go together. If you are vaccinated, you, have more like, you are more likely to die from COVID. But this is not a cause. This is not the cause for it. Okay? It's not the vaccine who is going to make you die. It's more that at this time of the campaign, if you are vaccinated, uh, it means you, at this moment you're more likely to be old because they gave the vaccine to old people first. It doesn't mean the vaccine is bad. So bottom line here is that um, when you're doing science and when you're doing mathematics, logical reasoning, you have a lot of traps lying everywhere, logical traps. And the job of a scientist and mathematician is try not to get to fall inside the trap. And OK, for mathematicians, this is actually what we learn at university, not to fall in the traps and trying to make very rigorous reasoning and stuff. But uh, I'm not going to talk badly about experimental sciences here because there are a lot of people from other sciences. But it's very important to try to not jump to conclusions too fast and to try to challenge your reasoning and challenge your conclusions. And it's very uh, useful to master the mathematics that are behind it and to try to make uh, not to fall in logical traps here. Okay, that's all I want to say. Thank you.